Okay, in today's video, what we're going to be talking about is how to uh, use auto discovery to find IO in, in your chassis. So um, this is an easy way to <clears throat> actually add your uh, IO cards or in input output cards or even, you know, your Ethernet or, or whatever cards you may have in your in your rack, your chassis. In this in this instance, we'll be uh, using RS Logics 5000 version 20. Um, basically, I just made a, a little small program. I have nothing in here. There's no logic behind any of this. Um, just wanted to show how to auto detect um, the cards. So it's a, it's called auto discovery. And, and again, a lot of you may know it. Uh, a lot of you may not. I'm not sure, but uh, this is something that can be helpful and, and useful when you need to. Um, there there are some limitations behind it, but the, you know, again, there's a lot of pluses behind it too. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get uh, actually to that. So first and foremost, what you want to do is you want to be online with the processor. So what we're going to do uh, with this brand new code is our brand new um, file is we're going to download it. So basically we're going to get online and make sure that we have uh, everything communicating to the processor itself. So we're actually talking through the uh, chassis backplane. And right now you see we have no IO in our IO configuration. Now we can manually enter it, right? But um, why not hit uh, Discover Modules? So real quick, we'll just go to Discover Modules. And what we can do is we can add each module. Now the only one that we can't do is the actual um, servo uh, motion servo card, which is no big deal. But, um, you know, so we'll go ahead and add these, you know, as, as we have. And it shows the firmware versions that these are. So you know that's a good plus that you have behind it you get the actual firmware version so in this case we we click create um, and this is our ethernet card uh, we'll just go ahead and, and put the name in there and it is in slot two so um, that's a good good side behind that is and a lot of the configuration and stuff like that um, you know that's that's the only thing it's like so if I if I came back here and went to this, you know, then basically it's going to have the full configuration in here. So that's that's the thing behind it. And it won't, won't do that on everything, I will say that. Um, so let's just go ahead and add uh, another. So we'll add. And as it, add, so the good side to it is, is behind, every time you add the module, it actually shows that it's been, you know, there's no action needed. This module exists. So now we're going to go ahead and do our input card. This is our uh, DC uh, input card. And we'll put a space. But so, okay. So this is going to be, and you can select the formats that you want, you know, as far as that goes, uh, depending upon what card and firmware you have. Um, in this case, we're just going to go with generic. You can put your RPIs in whatever you want your requested pack intervals. Basically, your timing of your I.O., um, you know, this talking between the back plane. So if you have real fast I.O., you can, you know, shrink it down uh, anywhere between uh, 0.2 to obviously 75 or basically three quarters of a second. Um, it go gives you your your uh, configuration and stuff like that. You can change all that is after you have it in. So you can always open it back up and change your configuration if you needed to. Um, the plus side to it is again you're you're auto discovering this stuff so you're not having to manually pull the card you're not having to go in there and you know just do different stuff and, and maybe look up numbers and you know sometimes that gets kind of tedious so the easy side to it is doing this okay so this would be our DC uh, output So that's a DC output. Um, we'll go ahead and add that again. I'm just going to leave this default as far as requ requested pack intervals. Um, but you, as long as you understand, you know what you can do behind that. Um, then we'll keep discovering. And again, the, the cool side behind it is, is you know, as you do it, 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 you know, you can just use what, pick and choose what you want to use, right? You don't have to add all of them. So this is my uh, analog input card and what you the thing about the analog input card so it's going to come in as a default value 
Um, the configurations, you know, that all depends on what you want to use. Um, so just be, be you know, mindful of that. This is not going to, all these cards are not going to come in like pre-done. They're just going to give you the generic sign-in. So um, if you have, say for instance, you're using an analog card, right? And you don't want to use 0 to 10 or negative 10 to 10. You want to use 4 to 20. Then you can't just come up here and select for channel 0. You can't just come up here and select, you know, 4 to 20. You have to, if I hit apply, it's going to say it's not right. So what I need to do is I need to change, you know, my engineering units to match, right? And then when I change my en engineering units to match, then it will accept it. So now that that actual channel is four to twenty, and then this is a four-channel card, so I would have to do that on each one of these. So just another thing that to just for you to understand is, you know, it, it's not it's going to pull in general information. It's not going to pull in exactly what you want. Um, it doesn't know necessarily what your, um, how your setup, how you're choosing to use your setup. And even if you have another processor in your system that you say, for instance, you want a Prodcon to or something, you can change that. So we can say, um, you know, processor two. I mean, you can, you can do something like that. And it, like I said, it detects exactly what version it is and everything. So this is 19.5. Um, so either way, so now you have all your, your IO and your, your, basically your tree, right? So you can come in here and, you know, start using stuff, you know, straight from square one. You can actually start programming from here if everything is, is fitting like you want it to, right? So as far, what I mean by that is, is like, say for instance, you have your configuration set, right? Um, your different cards and stuff of that nature. I mean. We can talk about that in another video as far as like how to set up cards for different atmospheres or different um, applications, I should say. But what I want to kind of address here is basically how to use that one feature. And again, you always come down right below your IO configuration in your backplane. You highlight your backplane and you hit discover modules. When you hit discover modules, it's going to find everything it possibly can add. And then you can go ahead and add it. So this saves you a lot of time as far as um, if you already have like a chassis that's preloaded and you have it powered up and you can communicate to it, then you can go ahead and do this method. Now, say for instance, you don't have it, you know, um, wired up and you can't uh, communicate to it, then you're going to have to pull the card and put in the information yourself. And obviously, if somebody's flashed a firmware, then you're going to have to understand what firmware it is so that if you, you know, as far as coming in here and setting uh, compatibility um, you know, whether you want, I mean, no exact match compatibility, disable king and that stuff. I always tend, uh, tend to set everything to compatible. Um, uh, it's just that much more easier when things get, you know, upgrade, they're always going to be compatible with, you know, things that are, are older than them. Some of the older stuff is not going to be compatible with newer stuff though. So, so just keep that in mind. So again, we'll, we'll kind of close this video out. Um, you know, I just wanted to kind of show that helpful feature. Again, a lot of you, you know, you probably already seen that. Uh, for those of you who haven't, hopefully that, that kind of added some benefit to you and helped you out. But, um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, you, you enjoyed the video and you kind of pick some stuff up and little tricks and stuff. Just note that you have to be communicating and you have to be able to go online with the processor itself. So, uh, again, for those of you that just uh, seen this video and haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe to the channel and to get all the updates and everything as far as that goes uh, for those ha that do follow the channel and have stuck with me then thank you for the support and